tuned in to the Community Cats Podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats Podcast. I'm your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. And today we're speaking with Jay Kennedy and Adrian Lefebvre. Two crazy cat ladies are with us today, and they are cat advocates social media influencers, bloggers, and content creators. They offer a full line of natural supplements, Feline Essential, made to help treat and prevent many common health issues in cats. In 2015, motivated by the lack of available resources for natural feline health, Jay and Adrian dedicated their lives to learning and sharing all they can to help cats live the longest, healthiest, and happiest lives possible. They host regular live shows on social media to connect with cat parents and answer questions they have about their kitties, as well as sharing tips about cat health and happiness via blogs and videos. Also worth mentioning, they always have a cocktail nearby. Hmm, interesting. Well, welcome to the show. So Adrian, you wanna just share first how the two of you, or how you personally became passionate about cats. Stacey, thank you so much for having us. Um, I have to say how this all came to be was almost accidentally. I think we both grew up thinking we were more dog people and we just started accumulating cats. Never went to shelters and looked to adopt, but they just came to us. And uh, we really, as you mentioned, in 2015, we really recognized how many things we didn't know about cats specifically. We had worked in pet nutrition since 2005, but it was very dog centric. And we were going through a heartbreaking experience with one of our cats with um, feline leukemia. And we were searching for more answers, more information, and we just couldn't find it. So we really realized then just how much we didn't even know about our own babies and how much we can do to help enrich their lives. And so we did, we branched out from pet nutrition, which was very dog centric and started looking at what we could do to help our feline friends and looking at building a community really that better addressed our cat's needs. Yeah. Excellent. Jay, do you have anything you want to add to that? I, th- I think she pretty much hit it n- nail on the head. Yeah. I mean, we now have six cats and I guess what we, what we really did was we became the resource that we could not find um, or we're working to become the resource that we could not find at that time back in 2015. Adrian, you mentioned that, you know, you're working with dog, a lot of dog companies, dog food, dog dominated world, right? Yeah. Yes. Totally. And how can we change that? I think it's, it's, persistence. I feel like, uh, and maybe it is, there's a, that stereotype, you know, we call ourselves the two crazy cat ladies because we felt like, well, our friends called us that. And we kind of took a little bit of offense to it almost. Like you think about the crazy cat lady as the neighbor down the road with 30 cats and she's always in her robe with, you know, that kind of stereotype. And that was not at all what we thought. And we realized that there is a bit of a stereotype attached to cat people. Part of that, I think, is that we're more introverted or we're quieter or, we're, you know, we're not always out at the dog park hanging out with each other and having a good time. So I feel like we really wanted to kind of change that. And I'm forgetting the question now. I think it's more, I think it's about awareness. Like it's really getting out there and that's kind of, you know, what we're doing, as you're saying, what we're doing is trying to get out there and let people know. And it's amazing, Stacey, the, the world that opens up uh, and how many other people are just like us. They absolutely love their cats. They don't want to tell their friends that they love their cats. They don't want to tell their friends that they're looking at their phone to see the video of their cats while they're at school or, you know, out out at a dinner or something um, because they're embarrassed of it. And we want, we want it to be something that everybody embraces just as dog people embrace having and loving their dogs as family. We should be able to do that with our kitties as well. And I think they, I, some people sort of talk about, you know, elevating the cat's status, you know, sort of out yep. there yeah. in, in the world. And, and you were talking about trying to get the right medical treatment for your cat and, not being able to find the natural resources, the natural health resources. Tell me a little bit about the evolution and discovery that you went through in the supplements and developing those resources to be able to help the cats in your care, as well as then sharing with everybody else. 
Yeah. So uh, when we started in pet nutrition, it was actually with my family business back in 2005. And they were working with a beautiful holistic um, animal scientist. And he's the one that created many of their products. So when we branched off, we reached out to him. Dr. Campbell is his name. He's in Oklahoma. And we were like, do you have anything that would work specifically for cats? Because, you know, we're in the in the pet nutrition world. It's basically all made supplements and things like that are all made with dogs in mind. And it's like, oh, they're good for cats too. But most cats don't like a dog treat. Most cats, you know, it, 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 and they don't really do any research behind the cats themselves. So we reached out to him and he was just elated that somebody wanted to help cats because he himself had rescued over at that time, over a hundred cats. And he was creating formulas to help nurse even cats with feline leukemia, natural formulas to help fight viruses and help nurse them back to health. And so he was like, I can share, I can share my formulas with you if you'll let people know that there are resources for cats. And we were like, okay, let's do that. Um, so we were really excited about, yeah, really excited about that. So we just started a, a full line. He uh, currently makes all of our supplements and it's expanded upon the years when, you know, we find a need for something, but herbal herbs, plant extracts, minerals, that's all what our liquid formulas are all made of. And we make it in a liquid formula because it's very easy to add to a little bit of wet food. Um, and it's also very absorbable rather than like a treat or a pill or something. Yeah. And to piggyback on top of that, I do think, you know, we're, we're talking about supplements and health, but I think too, and that being so dog centric back when we were working with that company, I think too, though, that it is a remarkable thing. You talk about elevating the cat status. I think so often people think of their pets, dogs and cats, and they kind of lump them together as, you know, companion animals where cats are so very different from dogs, not just in what they may need nutritionally or medically in that way, but also just their environment and what enriches a cat's life. We were talking the other day about how if someone goes out and gets a bird or a guinea pig they, or a rabbit, they spend a lot of time being like, ooh, well, what do rabbits eat? And how do they live? And what do they need in their day? And what do guinea pigs want? And when you go and get a cat, it's kind of like, they're not little dogs. It's right. not the same kind of situation. And being able to really not just elevate a uh, the stereotype or whatever it is of cat people, but also giving more attention uh, and enrichment to cats' lives and what they need is, is really an exciting thing to do as well. Yeah, I was. I had a conversation earlier today where folks were talking about you know we have this idea of folks getting cats and you put food out and you scoop the litter box and sometimes people scoop the litter box only once a week you know and they're not doing it every day and but then there's a whole other category of enrichment you know puzzle feeders. I don't think a lot of people know what puzzle feeders are. And I don't think that they know that it's important for cats to catch their prey at the end of a playtime. You know, and I was I was discussing, you know, I said, well, you know, the cats, I've been very unsuccessful at preventing my cats from waking me up during night, you know, the nighttime, that kind of thing. So what are those great tips to be able to have a full night's sleep and that kind of thing? And there's just so much more that we should be doing with our cats. And it should be part of the package but it's not part of our innate package of cat ownership. Yeah, unfortunately, many of us think, and we were, we're guilty of this too, when we first you know, became cat parents way back in the day, 20 something years ago, people just think that you know, the cats just sleep all day, they just hang out. It's, you know, they're basically more of like an accessory instead of family member, right? They're more like a convenience companion. Convenience right? companion, yeah. They're, they're very, everyone thinks cats are very low maintenance, as you said. You just put a bunch of food down in a trough and uh, let them graze away all day. And maybe they look cute on the couch for a little while. And oh, what about that litter box? And you think that that's, you, you know, you think that that's it. You, if you're going to get a cat, you get a food bowl, some cat food and a litter box and yeah. you're good. And I think that that's where needs. we started. And, and I think to be honest with you, so much of what we, what we do and what we share in our motto is learn, share and grow. And we're trying to continue doing that every day. A lot of what we share are our mistakes or things that we, mistakes is a harsh word, I guess, but, but yeah, mistakes that we made with our cats, not recognizing, not realizing their needs um, right. and not giving them their, their best life, really, you know, not <clears throat> letting them live their healthiest, happiest, most enriched life. And it's very exciting to continue learning and finding people, you know, in 2000, I think it was about 2007 when we went through um, feeling leukemia with Tyke it seems like the internet was very young at that time, right? Like we didn't, we didn't 
even know, did they have Google then? I don't even remember, but, <laughs> but it was hard to find things. And, you know, one of the first websites that we found was Dr. Lisa Pearson's website, cadinfo.org. And it was like, oh, wow, this is a lot of information. But it was one of those one, it still is a one page website that just goes and goes and goes. But it's, it was exciting to start seeing that there are little pockets of resources out there. And mm-hmm. it's a matter of really trying to accumulate as much as you can. And gosh, we have share. learned so much, um, even just since 2015, starting, you know, starting this business, we have learned so much about how to enrich our cats lives, whether that mean diet, nutrition, supplementation, but even more so the, you know, the environmental things that they need, like vertical space, you know, like that's not something that we ever did. Now we have like half of our house built in like vertical space for our cats. You know, we have cat walks and cat runs and and stuff everywhere because we learned that that helps to reduce our cat's stress. And we are basically stressing them out by keeping them in four walls and not playing with them and not giving them environmental enrichment. You know, I think it's, I mean, obviously all the statistics show that cats that live indoors live a lot longer life, but we want them to still live the happy life that they would live if they were outside on their own, but we have to make effort. We can't just keep them as a convenience pet or a, or a, you know, accessory. We have to, um, we have to enrich them. So my, uh, my niece has a cat. She was a dog person who adopted a kitten It's so interesting because when I was visiting her, when she had the kitten, we were going outside, we were going to go and play paddle tennis. Okay. And so I'm like, okay, well you leave the cat inside and you know, we all go. And she's like, no, you bring the cat with you. And she had a cat carrier and stuff. And then she transferred the cat into a harness. And then, you know, she had the cat backpack and all of that stuff. Now the cat goes kayaking, goes on paddle boards, will actually swim in the lake. And so she's a college kitty. She's, she's at college. And, you know, so, and I'm like, wow, this is this dog mentality of like, we don't leave our cats at home. We bring them with us. So she's created this. I mean, the two of them have created this bond, a travel bond, I guess. So do you think it's cool that people bring their cats around with them? I think it's absolutely amazing. We call them adventure cats, but I, and I, I, Every cat is different. Every cat has a different personality. Um, we have one cat that would be considered an adventure cat. He likes to go in the backpack. He likes to be on a harness. He likes to go in the car. But actually, none of our other cats really like that. You know, we've we've tried and we you know just test their personalities. If you have a cat that you can take outside, I mean, we we recommend bringing your cats outside, just supervised in some way, on a leash, in a catio in, you know, some in your backyard in a small enclosed area where you can supervise them because putting their feet to the earth is very, very good for them um, mentally and physically. But, you know, just letting them run outside is just, uh, you know, unfortunately exposing them to dangers that they wouldn't be exposed to otherwise. Well, and uh, I I do think too, that there, some cats do have obviously a, a personality that really loves that adventure side. And you can find cats even that are older that are like, yeah, let's do this. Let's roll. But I do think that there is that window, something that we've heard from behavioralists is that there's that window of not just socialization for cats, but I think when they're young, getting them accustomed to things that are stereotypically more difficult for a lot of cats, whether it's, you know, playing with their paws to make it easier to trim their nails, playing with their mouth to make sure you can keep an eye on their teeth, taking them for car rides to make sure that the vet visit isn't something super traumatic for them. So I think if you, if you, if you go into it, it sounds like your niece is was very consistent about how she really included her cat from a young age in, in the activities that she did. And I think that that's part of it. Consistency is something that's really important for cats and that, mm-hmm. and that, and that routine kind of, so that they, where it becomes something that they're not scared of. It's something that you're looking forward to. And yeah. I think that's, that's brilliant. What you're <laughs> did. Yeah, I agree. Well, and it's funny because with a previous dog that they had, you know, she did a dog training with the dog and, and the dog became a service, you know, dog and, that kind of thing, or a therapy dog, that that kind of stuff. So, I mean, she probably was looking for like kitty school, right? You know, like, yeah. which we don't necessarily, I mean, there are some kitten schools out there, but it's not like obvious, but from the dog world, I just found it fascinating, this transfer yeah. of how she overlaid some of the behaviors that she had with her other pets to her cat. And I'm like, no, but this is a cat. And she's like, but why, why should I consider it any different? So I just found that really, really interesting. <laughs> We interrupt this podcast for a quick trivia question. 
Where's the single place with answers to all of your animal welfare questions? Yes, even the one that kept you awake until two in the morning. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? It's Maddie's Pet Forum. Maddie's Pet Forum is the only dedicated forum for our industry where you can find answers from colleagues fast and free. Stop doom scrolling and join today. Visit forum.maddiesfund.org slash cats. Could your animal welfare organization use a tune-up? Humane Network can help. You can get a free 30-minute consultation to talk through your challenges and get ideas on how your organization can be more successful with less stress. From board development and fundraising to strategic planning and operations, Humane Network has got you covered. Whether you are a large or small, nonprofit or government, it's a live and thriving program led by a certified animal behavior consultant, features specially designed training for shelter and clinic staff on enrichment, stress reduction, safe animal handling, and behavior modification. With Humane Network, you receive individualized advice and support customized to meet your organization's unique needs. And Humane Network can lighten your load by taking on fundraising, communications, and other tasks you struggle with. Contact Humane Network today for a free 30-minute consultation. Visit humanenetwork.org. That's humanenetwork.org. Team Dubert is at it again, and now they have an amazing companion case management module that once again revolutionizes how you rescue animals. Dubert partnered with Dallas Pets Alive and the Spay Neuter Network to build a powerful solution that allows you to manage cases of any kind. Whether owner surrender calls or emails, community cat tracking and reporting, Dubert is the only system that integrates two way text messaging, automatic follow ups, and even a rehoming solution that every organization can use. No more trying to manage 10 different technologies when everything is all in one place and tightly integrated. From fostering to transport, fundraising to e-commerce, supply and demand to case management, Dubert has everything you need to streamline your operations so you can focus on saving more animals. Check out the new companion case management module at www.dubert.com slash CCM and get signed up today. And so you two have a podcast, don't you? Tell we me do. Little, tell me a little bit about the podcast. It's called Back in the Closet um, <laughs> with the two crazy cat ladies. It's kind of funny, but, uh, but we, we actually record it in our closet because that's where the best uh, audio is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and we record it every, um, every week and drop it on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, you know, all those platforms. And we really talk about everything. So our podcast is different from many of the live videos and the cat tips and things like that. Sometimes we're talking just about a cat issue. Sometimes we're talking about our life and our business and, you know, something that just so just happened that's on our mind. So it's kind of all over the place, but it's, it's a way to better, like, I guess, get to know us. Great. So you're really heavy into social media. So I'm sure I can't get away without asking you, what are your tips and tricks for successful social media? Because I know a lot of people ask about that and how you got it started. And, you know, how does, how does your business work? You, you make money off the supplements. I mean, we also have to figure out a way to live in Mm -hmm. supporting our passion for cats. I, I'm trying to do it. You're trying to do it. Our nonprofits are trying to do it to be able to serve their missions. Our trappers that are out there, they're 78% of the people that were at my last trapper certification workshop, they're doing this on their own. They're funding mm-hmm. it. They're paying for the spay neuter. They're buying their traps. They're doing all this. So we're all trying to figure out ways, you know, how can we, you know, possibly keep the lights on and be able to help more kitties in our, in our communities. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually really difficult, right? Especially in the cat world, it's such a niche market, which you wouldn't think because the dog world wouldn't necessarily be considered a niche market and it's a billion dollar industry on its own. And yet more cats are owned in the U S than dogs. Right. So So, um, it's, it's interesting, but as far as, you know, just like with our cats, when it comes to social media, consistency is, is key. We haven't, we're still not paying ourselves six years later fully, you know, I mean, we we're living, but it is, it's kind of, it's hard in the cat world (laughs) to, you know, get off the ground and make money, but consistency is key. If you just keep, keep going on uh, social media and then listening to your audience, listening to, you know, your followers, what do they want to See, it's been interesting, especially even just this year on TikTok. You know, we make cat tips every three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We we have a cat tip of the day that we create, edit, uh, put together, and drop online. And we see, you know, the people on Facebook. They tend to go more towards the health related ones, and the people on Instagram. 
tend to go more towards these type of uh, cat tips. And then on on TikTok, it's like they want to know about whisker stress. Like they're, you know, like it's like, wow, we're, we're really to the the tiny things about primordial pouches in cats. And what was that thing that's called the Henry's pocket in my cat's ear? Like they're interested in like fun facts more so than um, than health things. So it's paying attention to your audience and then and then curating that content based on what they want. Uh, I think is the key to social media success. Yeah, and I think some of the nuts and bolts are really, you know, looking at lighting, looking at um, not just paying attention to the audience, but understanding that people have a very short attention span yeah. these days. So engaging people as quickly as possible. And and I, you, when, you, when you said successful social media, I'm not quite, we're still working towards that. <laughs> I think that it's a challenge every day. And we learn a lot from uh, our community, we really do. I, but but some of the other nuts and bolts, you know, as we mentioned, we started in 2015. We've both just Jabe has been running this completely on her own for almost six years. Six years. Uh, we now have a small team of beautiful women that are helping us with our social media uh, promotions and mm-hmm. customer service and that sort of thing. But it is I, I hear what you're saying, especially for those that are out in the field, really in the trenches, helping community cats and uh, doing rescue work and that sort of thing. It's difficult to to figure out how can we balance this in a way. And I feel like we were very spoiled because we were able to start the business and Jake had worked full-time and I kept a full-time job until uh, July of this year. So it's a very long road of just being as consistent as possible, but it's so true that it's the passion that drives it most. Yeah. A hundred percent because what, yeah. So we made every mistake you can make as a business when we, when we started, because we were like, okay, well, business, we have to make money. So we have natural products. We are going to reach out to cat parents and we're going to help sell products to help cats. And, uh, for the first two years, that's what we tried to do. And we found, we found out that we suck at sales. We don't sell products very well. We're just not good at that. I could sell somebody else's product all day long, but selling our own just feels weird. So after two years, we honestly went bankrupt, literally bankrupt. And then, but we weren't going to stop because we knew that our mission was to help cats and it grew over those two years too. So we ended up changing our perspective. And instead of trying to sell products, we started selling our passion. And that's when we really started learning everything that we could. So we're just giving out free information left and right, left and right, left and right. And this is how you can help your cat. You don't have to buy our product. You can do this. You can do that. Then our profit started to increase because people started to you know, really trust the brand and trust that we actually care. And um, yeah, and I think that's been our, our key to success so far. Before we um, wrap up, I have to circle back to your cat that had feline leukemia because feline leukemia is near and dear to my heart. Also, the organization I was with, we've been adopting out feline leukemia cats since 1996. And uh, so I adopted out one of the first, I adopted the first cat and her name was um, Nala and she was a mom cat. And unfortunately her kittens, as well as we had orphan kittens that latched onto her And this was back in the day, and the vet tested the kittens after she had nursed them for months and months and months. And at that time, the vet thought we had a euthanasia policy with regards to positive kittens, and her kittens got positive, and and the, the orphan kittens were positive, and they were just euthanized. And we freaked out when that happened. And Nala, the mom, came into our adoption center and and she's healthy. And they were like, oh, you should probably have the mom come in and get tested. Mom got tested. She was positive for feline leukemia. She picked him up from the orphan kittens, said, there's no way we're going to put this kitty to sleep because she gave her life for those babies. And so we had her in. We had her in our adoption center. And I adopted her out to a seven-year-old girl. The girl came in, she fell in love with Nala. She thought she was wonderful. And I said to the, I pulled the mom aside. I said, you know, you realize, you know, we don't know what's going to happen here with, the, with feline leukemia. And she goes, you know, the bond is more important than anything else. And she goes, my daughter's connecting with that cat. The cat's connecting with her. We need to take her home, you know, for whatever time she might have. After that, we never had any cat that tested positive for anything put to sleep after that point in time. Uh And so, you know, hundreds of feline leukemia positive kitties have been adopted out, you know, through the program. But with all that being said, I just, I'm assuming you feel as equally passionate about feline leukemia kitties based on your experience. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The stuff that we have learned um, is so, it's actually so refreshing to know that, you know, a cat with 
feline leukemia or FIV even can live a long and healthy and happy life, just like any other cat. They just need a little bit more support than, um, than maybe the, the average healthy cat, but it doesn't stop them from um, getting a chance at life. And, you know, we, we didn't know when we got that awful diagnosis, we just heard feline leukemia had never heard of it before. We thought cancer. And then the, the vet that we were using at the time actually uh, requested or asked if we wanted to do chemotherapy. So of course we thought it was cancer. So we were like, okay. And we obviously we ended up opting out of that because he ended up passing, but uh, it was a, he was my soul cat. And so it was like a, it was a very traumatic experience for us. Um, so when, now that we learned better, now that we know better that it's a virus, that it's a virus that's in the gut and that, and that the virus, um, obviously, I mean, luckily most cats don't even pass from feline leukemia itself. It's a secondary infection due to the weakened immune system. So knowing that now that we can support our cats both proactively and reactively if needs, if need be with, with immunity support, that they can still have a chance and we see it happen every day now. And it's, it's just beautiful. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for, you know, promoting and advocating for feline leukemia, positive kitties for FIV positive kitties. Uh, they're all near and dear to our hearts. We had a presentation a, a, several months ago about CH kitties, you know, the, yeah. the wobbly yeah. kitties. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we've had some of those, you know, they're all wonderful. That's all. It's yes. just, it's, it's so easy to fall in love. If folks are interested in finding out more about the two crazy cat ladies, how would they do that? You can go to our website at two crazy cat ladies.com. That's T W O crazy cat ladies.com. <laughs> and you can also find us on uh, Facebook and Instagram, the two crazy cat ladies, uh, TikTok, two crazy cat ladies. Um, you'll see our little cartoon heads and that's, that's how you'll find us. Oh, and YouTube as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? I just I want to say thank you for having us on this program. I think that it's really wonderful to, you know, as you said about FELV kitties and cats in general, and just helping all our cats live a better life. It's, it's really that cats really are some of our best teachers yeah. as well. And I feel like we've all had that special cat in their life that helps us be a better human and helps us better take care of uh, the cats that come into our lives. Yeah. So thank you for all that you do. And thank you for having us. Yes. And thank you for spreading the words. That's great. And I think also we all have an aha moment. You know, we have this aha moment and it pushes us over a bridge and puts us on this path and we keep walking down it and we just grow and build and grow and build. And I think that's the moral of the story for everybody is just keep taking one step forward, you know, each day and we're going to all grow together and our cats are just going to be so much happier and healthier for it, for sure. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. That's it for this week. Please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. We love to hear what you think, and a five-star review really helps others find the show. You can also join the conversation with listeners, cat caretakers, and me on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to hit follow or subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single show. Thanks for listening, and thank you for everything that you do to help create a safe and healthy world for cats. in January. If you did, we hope you enjoyed the incredible content provided by our expert presenters and helpful information and encouragement will help you turn your cats into action. Events at the online cat conference would not be possible without the support of our generous sponsors. The premier sponsor was Maddie's Fund. Leadership sponsors include Best Friends, Tika, Dr. Elsie's Cat Products, and Care. Staining sponsors included Pets at Mall, Humane Network, the MSPCA, and the Vermont Humane Federation. If your business or organization would like to support content that makes a difference for cats and communities worldwide, visit communitycatspodcast.com events sponsorship.